You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. Broadcasting from the Blanchestan Center. This is Phoenix FM. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to pitch bad movies. According to the Nerd Index, you should be upside down in a junior high toilet around the clock. This is the Well, good luck! Time is in, time is out. Never miss communication. It's over 9,000! My name is Foxy. The balls are in there. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nerd to No Basis here on Phoenix 92.5 FM. Uh, with me today, it's me and Dara. How are Ahoy. you doing, Dara? Ahoy, how are you? I am doing good. I have dredged myself away from the fields of Hyrule uh, <laughs> for, for a spare hour of my time uh, to come here and record with you. How are you keeping? Uh, I'm good. I'm sore, but I'm good. Since our last show, I've uh, got my black tag in Taekwondo. So, you know, if anyone does want to take up Taekwondo, uh, get in touch and we can we can guide you to the right place if you're in the Blanchestown area. He um, is he is it. now a, a certified expert in getting punched in the face. Well, not an expert, but I have some knowledge of getting punched in the face. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm good. Man. I've, I've been busy. I've had a lot of things on uh you know, as we all have, Keen has a new member of his family, so that's why he's not here. Uh, things haven't been that crazy for me, but uh, yeah, there's just like a lot going on. We've had like I have new technology to review, some video games to review. We have some GameStop uh, news to talk about. Yeah, uh, some and, film and review. I all that good stuff. You you had a big trip there recently, and as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. This is this is why he's the pro and I'm not. <laughs> um, yeah, I was over in MCM in London, so we talk about that as well. So there's a lot to talk about this week. And Apple just like literally made the headset from. Uh, oh God, from Ready Player from One. Ready Player One. <laughs> which I'm not gonna lie, it it I probably will buy one. Uh, it looks pretty amazing. At so. that price. Not at that, that price. price. Not that price, of course not. But I mean, eventually, <laughs> I, eventually it will go down. Do you know what? We I I, I do want to touch it because I was watching a video because uh, it's it's yeah the new like Apple VR headset. I don't know the full. It's not really it. VR. It's not really. See, that's the thing. It's not really it, VR. It, it's AR. Is it AR. So it's Google yeah. Glass kind of. Yeah, and that's the okay. thing. I wouldn't mind. Like I saw a good meme where it was like the Google Glass team freaking out over people like with ARs. Like the problem with Google Glass was it was amazing. It was just that bit. Too ahead of its time, they just quite not nailed but, it down. Yeah, yeah, but by just a hair, like that technology was incredible. Because I don't really, I'll be honest with you, I don't really like VR itself. I think VR has some great. I guess we'll start there. VR has some really, really good. So virtual reality is where the whole. So for anyone who doesn't know, virtual reality is um when you put the headset on and it, it's completely immersive. There's some really cool uh, applications of it, not just in gaming. If you, I don't, have you ever been to Waterford? Have you ever, ever been to the Viking Triangle in Waterford? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, that's actually a really like if you're ever in Waterford, I would recommend doing the Viking Triangle. So um, is, is it is it a kind of a historical recreation of VR? No, 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 kind of. But that's an area of all the Viking stuff, right? Mm. And then inside it, they have like the Viking experience where you, you go inside this little hut and you put the headset on and it takes you through the entire history of Ireland, Ireland's Vikings and Ireland's yeah. Viking hi- history. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's all true. Uh, it's built on the Unity en- en- engine using VR. So it is quite amazing. And before COVID, there were a good meetup of like Unity developers in Dublin. They'd meet, up, they'd meet in the Workday office. And they would um they they would pretty much show a lot of applications of using VR. So it is really, really cool. My problem with it is it's you can't use it every day. It's too obstructive. You know what I mean? Like it's if you were to oh. put that on to go into an, I don't particularly see the application for it outside of this is uh 
cyberpunk hellscape. That's it's it's still kind of sitting in that novelty space. Yeah, because well, it, it's like I I I do have a PlayStation VR that I have used more than I think a normal person would. Okay, uh, like I played through all of Resident Evil Seven in it. Wow, and but like that's it it you have to kind of overcome the physical limitations of motion sickness and the like and it's See, something that they haven't quite managed to like nail down a good way of doing that yeah and that's why i like ar because and that's augmented reality yeah so it's still your space with an with a hood yeah right and yeah, i think that's a much better a much better use of this technology like fair play to apple i mean the thing about apple is whether you like them or not and i'm not a huge fan but i do i have a few macbooks I use them for work. Um, I have I have an iPad. I really like it. I would not use an iPhone, but you know we do use it for the show. Um, it's, it's, the, the stuff works. It's like they they the are a works. very innovative company, but but how prioritive their software is, it is a nuisance to use sometimes. <laughs> Correct, but what I'm saying here is, it's like Google had this technology and yeah. they just kind of gave up on it. Apple have seemed to have been like, actually, no. We're going all in on this. Now, it's very different. Like, I mean, Google Glass was a gimmick, but it was pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I I would still, I would use that technology now, right? Because I kind of like the jank. But this is like a computer. This is a MacBook on your face, which is why it costs nearly four grand. Because that's what it is. It's literally that's, a MacBook yeah. on your face, right? Um, And you can actually use it for work. Because, I mean, the fact that you're able to kind of go through apps without using any kind of uh, peripheral is amazing. Okay. Um. Like, eventually, it'll be like Minority Report, where you can just you seen a Minority Report, haven't you? No, I. You know, funnily enough, I haven't. You should. Like, minority I, Minority Report's fantastic. It's but, really I, good. but I'm. But I'm. You know, I'm basic. I. I. I understand the the idea of you know the cyberpunk futurism, where you just kind of have over like recent Star Trek Discovery has just all of the comms badges are uh full computers in themselves, where all of your workload you just pull up on a badge and. It's, it's yeah, and I mean, I, I, I think yeah. technology is going there anyway. Yeah. You know, like, that makes a lot of sense. Like, the, the biggest problem that you have really is you can't interface with technology fully. Like, we're still, me, trying to talk with circuits. Yeah. Can't get there yet. That is still going to be, well, maybe not for too much longer, but definitely right now, that's the problem, right? We can only interface with, you know, most people, mice and a keyboard, right? Yeah. But with this, it, it's it bridges that kind of gap, which is really cool. And I mean, if you're using AR, like, no, you can be anywhere at once. You can have your display here and you don't, it, it removes the need further for having these big offices, having these big setups, these prohibit, like, think about this, way, right? You're working in a, you, you work from home, right? You need two, two screens, one screen, a keyboard, a mouse, all that kind of stuff and your, your work machine. To me, it makes way more sense to give you an AR headset, which is your work machine, which is your monitor, which is your mouse, which is your keyboard, all there. Hmm. And you can stand up. You don't need a massive desk. You know, it, 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 it's... And that's it's, where I see this going. You know, you can still be there. You can take the headset off, obviously. You can, you know, on your brakes or, or all that stuff. But you don't need big, bulky tech anymore. You know? Like, it's like it's like an Iron Man with Tony Stark. Like, one of the reasons yeah. why he's so cool is... His his arc is like well, I'm sorry, pun intended, pun wasn't intended, but I'm gonna take it anyway. Even even looking at the arc, you know, he he built this massive, 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 massive thing that was a, basically a science project, and then eventually it was so small he could put it on his chest or wear it on his watch. You know, that's a like technology. They, they works. really, you know, like it, it, like in Endgame, they kind of brushed off the fact that he just kind of created nanotechnology. Because, like, well, I mean, it, but no, t no, I mean, if you think about it, right? Like, yeah, you, do you know, do you, do you know what Ohm's law is? Uh, remind me which one's Ohm. It so, is that the idea that yeah, every two years technology either halves in size or no, it doubles, doubles, doubles in size. Yeah, yeah. So, or so doubles in power, right? That's, so, yeah, doubles in power, halves in size. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, you know, in that world. <laughs> we're going off a tangent, but in that world, he he created an element. Yeah. Right. So if you think, right, double that, a 
and then double and just keep going and eventually yeah you get to nan- nanotechnology and obviously aliens and all kind of good that stuff as well are all real <laughs> all you know aliens all kind of good stuff <laughs> yeah it's all real in that universe so I mean obviously that, that you have to take out a grain of salt but in the real world I mean we've gone from dial up to instantaneous gaming technology we you know we've gone from you know computers to take up entire rooms to like you know, an ex- an extremely powerful computer that that would make what look going to the moon archaic sitting on the, yeah. on the desk. You know, oh, so like I I'm blown away by how like my modem isn't even actually wired through a phone network anymore. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's it's taking the fi- the 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 latent five G signal and just routing that through a Wi Fi route. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it's, it's, yeah, but that that's it. Like you know, technology it will always innovate and iterate and that's the whole you know chat gdp thing as well where it's going to be a whole other aspect of this so i mean i again i feel bad for google probably would never say that word that that sentence yeah. often but it's like i feel bad for the engineers let's put it that way who yeah. were like this is amazing it's like it is it was you were right you were yeah, just i mean it's it's so on brand for google to be like well i guess we half made this it didn't immediately become a success can it like the rest but that, there's actually there's actually a website where it's like uh, it just yeah, lists Google, Google Graveyard yeah and some of the stuff they have it's like why what, what that's incredible what were you doing and I think it's say like, like the, the most recent edition or the most the most relevant recent or um was prevalent recent edition chat, wasn't Stadia. It? Oh, Stadia. Was oh, Stadia Stadia yeah, Stadia is yeah. the big one I think of recently but actually, I think it's, I just, it's a list that's constantly growing <laughs> I just discovered actually that uh, Amazon have their own cloud platform called Luna and it's not out I've here heard not out that's here. probably I, I've heard murmurings of it, but like, yeah, it's, it's in it's Germany. Like a streaming platform, is it? Yeah, it's in Germany and it's in uh, England and it's also in America, but it's oh, not right. here. Now, here's the thing: it's like AWS is Amazon's web services, right? So I mean, yeah, and their web service is great, and everything runs on AWS, right? Everything runs on Amazon. It, it really does. I I know some people are like, oh, but Microsoft, the Google, like, oh, everything runs on Amazon. Um, so I mean. That makes more sense because they have a much higher probably I even play it, so I don't know, but mm. if there was a company to get into that business, uh yeah, I would rather go with Amazon than with Google because Yeah. You know, Google Cloud Platform isn't bad. It really isn't, but it's not not AWS, you know? So Well, I mean, like it's it, it, in terms of that kind of uh like for that market, it's more about platform than it is actual like service is great if you get a good service you're off to a good start but you're also still a platform and you have to contend as a platform would so oh yeah you, no absolutely like, you, but... like they they need they kind of need the games to back it up yeah but I, you also like here's the thing like you also need to have the infrastructure to back it up as well hmm. you know like I, I and i think they've been smart with the games they've released because it's like when you get when you get prime you get some free games and that's how I discovered it because I'm like, oh, okay, we can't play it. It's not Ireland yet, but it probably will. Yeah. I think it's scheduled for like October, which is pretty cool. Yeah, but um, Prime is, yeah, but Amazon and Prime have always kind of been weird about Ireland as a territory. We yeah. Get, we do get bundled into the UK quite a lot. Yeah, but in this case, we don't, which is unfortunate because then we would have it. But yeah, I mean, like, I don't think we're there yet to have the entire game running on, you know, and then also having a multiplayer there. I think that's a bridge oh. too far. But having good, strong single player experiences is probably more than enough. But then again, it's got to do with the fact that not everybody can have a game in PC, not everybody can have Yeah. You know, this. But I will have to say, in this spirit, I do have a product review. Now again, we're not sponsored. We're not hmm. sponsored by them. I, I I bought it. I wasn't given one for free. I just I've been looking for this for a while. So this is a product I've been looking for a portable PS2 for, for ages. And a portable okay. Dreamcast for ages, etc. Right. So because you know. I have the Steam Deck and the Steam Deck's amazing, but it's big. Steam Deck's big, man. It's about yeah. it's bigger than the Switch OLED by a fair bit. Yeah. It's hefty. And I'm like, I'm not taking it outside the house. <laughs> I'm just not. Um so it kind of defeat the purpose. What 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 it sounds like to me is you're looking for another PS Vita. <laughs> Correct. A more powerful okay. PS Vita. Genuinely, yeah, that's a very good way to put it, actually. And um I would look but the price point of them can be quite expensive. There's the GDP win which um can take you up to a grand and a half or something like that so I'm like I'm not paying that I'm just not yeah. but I found a pretty good company called A A Y O right okay and I think they're in China I'm not too sure but they, they run basically AMD uh, chipset right so 
AMD processor uh, and you know a, a couple of cores that are in there and about 16 gigs of RAM. So it, it's it's not a bad machine at all. It runs on Android. So I was like, okay, I'll give this a shot. About 300 euros, 400 in total with, with import and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, I'll give this a go. It's wonderful, man. It's so good. It it emulates because the, obviously the Steam Deck emulates everything perfectly, right? Yeah. Um, like it, it has no problem running whatever you throw at it. It's going to run perfectly, right? As you would expect, even yeah. the, even the cheap version, right? This, however, this is smaller. This is like about the same size of the the Switch Lite, so it's exactly the size I wanted it to be. Uh, it it the battery life's incredible. Uh, you can there's an SD slot so you can pop in that. It comes with like uh, mine has one twenty five gig of onboard memory um of on, on onboard storage rather not memory and um yeah it's great like i was just I, like right i want to throw some ps2 games because that's what i wanted it for well, that's, really. yeah so like it's, it's a primarily for kind of uh ps2 era retro games or yeah or that, that's this... that's what i wanted it for i don't think that's what it's for per se so like it could but... run modern games it has the ability yeah, to run like kind of high quality modern games. Yeah, so obviously it's running Android, right? So yeah. you need to kind of be mindful of that. But if you you can you can Steam link it, so you can play your Steam okay. if you're off your PC perfectly. But it it can play pretty much anything on the Android store, like fine. It can okay. play fine. I actually I want to kind of link this up with another major story this week. Just remind me Android store. Um, yeah, and it's uh it's great. It's really good. Like I I've I've been running it through the barrage of PS2 games just to see what it'll work. And the biggest, like, cause I, I had the, the retroid, which is good, but that's 150 euro. So it's a lot yeah. cheaper. And you know, it's a good machine. It really is. It runs like PS1 fine, but I never really liked how it felt. It felt kind mm. of cheap. If, and that, that's a horrible thing to say, but I don't mean it that way. It's just, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like a modern, a modern console. It feels like a, a, a kind of, a weird Game Boy Advance, if that mm. makes sense. Ah, uh, yeah, something just a little too clunky. Yeah, a bit too yeah. clunky, and the screen is a bit too small, and it, it's not ideal. Because I was playing, um, I was playing some Android games on it, like Bully and uh, Cultor, and I'm like, oh, this is yeah, that's I yeah, no, I want I want you to give me I want you to give me some throwbacks. What's what what PS2 games have been rolling around with yet? Yeah, so and then uh, and on that, like you know, you, you build up a PS2 game, and the thing just is like, no, I can't handle this, right? So I was like, right, I want to actually <laughs> find a solution here. And I got this, and it's great. It, it's called the the A Y O Odin, right? So that's that's the model that it is. And okay. it's the and I would recommend going for the Odin Pro because that's the one I got as well. It's a little bit better, um, and it runs everything flawlessly. So you asked the question, right? So the PS2 has, and I think you'll appreciate this, has a lot of really really good Asian horror games, particularly from Japan. Oh yeah, the Re- uh, Rule of Rose. Uh, Fatal Frame one and one, two, and three all run perfectly. The Tekken four, Tekken five run spectacularly well. Okay. Only a little bit of slowdown now and again, but I mean that game is so fast mm. that it runs really well. Battlefront two, however, doesn't. <laughs> it is oh, weird because it's what such... a shame. Yeah, it's a sh- but it's just that little bit too much where there's too much going on. But PS, I'm going to test the PSP version of Battlefront two. Okay. That should run fine. That should run fine. So I I haven't I, tested those yet, but I wonder should... how the resolution on that though would work because I like. Because this thing sounds at least like a fair might bigger than a PSP. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, like, I wonder how just kind of upscaling the PSP version would look. If it's you know what's cool, though? It, it No, no, no. It actually runs. Uh, like, the great thing about the emulators is they actually run their own. So, they have achievements, which is nice, right? This, okay. The PlayStation 2 one, for example, has its own achievements. And it actually natively upscales. Okay. So natively upscales, and then you can adjust the screen. So I mean, emulation has come a very long way. And again, we don't endorse yeah. stealing content. Obviously, I mean, any game that I'm talking about here, I have bought. I have a I have a room full of PlayStation Two games, right? So I bought these games. Yeah. So, but we all, but we, but we know. also endorse game uh, preservation. Preservation, exactly. There's no other way to play these games. There genuinely yeah. isn't. If, so, just if Sony could sell us these games, we'd buy them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you just you can't like it's 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 crazy. But uh, you know, with, with Tekken, I was I, I wanted to play play Tekken Four. Right, I love Tekken Four. I love all those games. But I was shocked how well that thing ran. It ran perfectly, except for one or two slowdowns, but not in combat. Just every now and then. So it. it, it Anything I've put a blade. Have you ever played Blade Two? That's a fun game. Oh yeah, that's a fun game. It's a really good game. Um, that runs perfectly. Uh, Blood Omen Two runs perfectly. So I mean, uh, Tony Hawk's Three Four run oh. amazingly well. 
So Great, yeah. And the cool thing as well, you can actually you can like with these you can uh do an FTP server and just kind of transfer everything over wirelessly. So you don't even need wires. You can just transfer everything. It, it's it's exactly what I wanted, and I didn't realize it was. Like I think I've been looking for something this for about three, about seven years actually. Um, something that could actually do this, and it it like Loki came out, and that's a bit more. It's about the same price as Steam Deck, and I would say, look, if you're looking, if you if you're looking to spend about four hundred euros, that's what's going to cost all in all. I mean, that's yeah, that's that's a pretty kind of standard price for that's like a standard Steam price, and yeah. and like you're you're torn between a Steam Deck or this. If you're okay with getting your Steam Deck kind of beat up, or you know maybe dropping it or whatever. For, get the Steam Deck, obviously. It, yeah. it it it's it is the standard. You know, I I get that. I I would rather not have my Switch than you know my Steam Deck, right? But mm. my Switch lives in my bag. I'm now replacing the Switch with the with the Odin because it has oh. everything. It has everything, everything I need, and it can also emulate the Switch because the Switch is just a very powerful uh, Wii, and it can emulate yeah. the Wii perfectly. So I mean, you know, it, it's it. Uh, I would say that. If you're looking for, and I hope listeners of the show have that mindset because we do try to to build it in, mm. have a little look around and and see what's out there, and you will find these little diamonds in the rough. Because I found this randomly on YouTube, I was like, "Oh, sweet!" Like, there's a couple of guys who I watch who review different things, and they were like, "This is the best, oh the yeah, best well, PlayStation Two emulator you can get." I mean, like and the Switch wrong. was ob- the Switch was obviously kind of the progenitor of these kind of hybrid handheld console absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but the steam deck opened the floodgates like i think i think acer now have a big one i think razor are in the midst of making you see, one I, I would be I think, I, like, that's well i would so be like, careful i would be careful with those and the reason why sorry yeah. for cutting across you i'd be careful with those is because they're going for the flash market right oh, when yeah. you're looking for this you need you need quality and you need performance yeah. and you also need to know what you're looking for like for example this thing doesn't handle multiplayer games like you know that's why it freaked out with battlefront because yeah. Time Splitters 2, it hates Time Splitters 2. Right. But there's an actual cheaper version, the Retroid I talked about. So the Retroid sure. 3 Pro is cheaper, runs those games perfectly, but doesn't run other games. So there's like Excel sheets. <laughs> it's mad. There's Excel sheets of all the stuff that's compatible. And I would say, do your own research. Don't believe what we're saying. Obviously, yeah. we don't want to put you wrong. I have no intention of doing that. But I'm just happy from my perspective that I found the handheld that I've always been looking for. But that's it. Well, I think what I'm saying you know? is that this is like, this it seems to be the kind of the new gold rush. Yeah, uh, absolutely. For, and for I, and I would say, be careful. Be careful oh, with yeah. the gold rush. Oh, no, like, like always, you know, people <laughs> will, will get in there and just try to make a quick book. Yeah, and, and, and again, I would say, you know, go on YouTube, have a little look around, you know, um, and if, if anyone's run like, and you want us to review stuff, I absolutely will give it a, <laughs> give it a whirl. But at the same time, I'm not going to, BS either because no. I've spent about four to five even seven years trying to get this working like I have an original G- GDP win they're phenomenal but clunky as all heck I've gone to three or three uh, different of these handhelds and yeah like the only thing that's given me what I wanted is the Steam Deck mm. and I'm not taking that outside it's yeah. not happening unless it's a 14 hour flight to America or something and then obviously yeah you're going to take it with you <laughs> but um this thing, man, the, the the Odin, it just blows everything else out of the water. That out does sound water. great. Um, while actually, while I'm thinking about it, speaking of kind of ga- like games preservation in terms of PS2 games, uh, big news for me about mm. two weeks ago that oh. I couldn't talk about because I was sick. Oh, um, so we're, we're we're in the kind of the summer games fest. We are season. Yeah, you know, lots of new games getting announced. Yes, Sony got the jump and made and had a big you know showcase direct there a couple weeks ago. The big surprise out of that is that Metal Gear Solid is coming back. Oh wow! Um, in that they are remake in that Konami are fully remaking Metal Gear Solid Three. Uh, called Metal Gear Solid Delta. Now they've even had to come out and clarify Kojima has nothing to do with this. No, he, which expected. He's off making his own game. Yes. Um, but so there's there's a lot of there's a lot going on there. I'm intrigued. I. By all accounts, it's very much they're sticking to everything in Metal Gear Solid and just remaking it in a modern engine. But that's not what I really want to talk about. What I want to talk about is that they are finally, finally porting the original games to, like, modern consoles. (laughs) Uh, They've Hmm. announced uh, the Master Collection of Metal Gear Solid's 1, 2, and 3. It looked like it was coming to all major consoles, 
mm. which means a PC port, which would be fantastic. And that's and what, is this the first time they've they've done that? Prop like really widely, yeah. The Metal Gear Solid has outside of its like original releases has had like sparse and like sparse and far between re-releases. Mm. They had uh so like all the three of these original games came out in the PS2, PS1, PS2. Um they remastered two, three, and one of the spin-offs, Peace Walker, on the PS3. PS I Vita. I think the PS Vita. And maybe the Xbox got a re-release of it, but I'm not 100% sure, or that mm. was very limited. Mm. And I think the only PC release of them is that Metal Gear Solid 1 is available on good old games. <laughs> like, that is the only way to get that game pretty much full stop these days. Right. So, like, this getting a fine, like a wide release, I think, like, you know, the, the, the likes, you know, Steam, Epic Game. Yeah. Uh, like, getting Metal Gear Solid finally getting a wide release. I just, I, now that it's getting a wide release, I think in August, I just want to implore people to go and play those goddamn games. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, man. I, exceptional. I genuinely, so a friend of mine asked me, speaking of game preservation, she wanted to play um, mm. Resident Evil 3, the OG mm. one, on the PC. It's actually surprisingly harder than you think. I'd uh, imagine, yeah. The only way I found to do it, and again, this is, you know, advice if you have Windows 11 or Windows 10 as well. I mean, they're, I, I think I ran into problems with both. Uh, Dreamcast emulator. Redream. It's the only way you can play it. Other than that, it just will not work. So I there you go. I, I keep forgetting those games, about half of those games reported as a Dreamcast. So did I. And yeah. I mean, it just because the, the, play, the PlayStation just like nope not working so you know even emulation it's kind of difficult you know the the way i would play most of those games would be on us on a on a psp actually yeah that's or or an android or um device because that's for some reason the emulation there just works so much better with ps1 but yeah i mean that's how you do it and i so anyway when i was doing that i was like right i was playing through um resident evil 3 i hate tank controls <laughs> hate Fair. I, hey. I like I I I like realized the past couple of years the Metal Gear Solid might be like or Resident Evil might be like one of my favorite game franchises. I have yet to actually go and play those original games because I just don't think I can do it. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> too hard. The tank controls are just terrible. I mean, I think it's the it's the worst worst decision ever with with these games because there's so there's that Devil May Cry, um, a Metal Gear games that just put me off for years because tank controls I hate them Metal Gear I, no, Metal, Metal Gear doesn't have tank controls I, first I, one does first one does first does. one it's not tank controls it it's, is it's, it it's is a P- it's not it is it is check it check it it is it is no it's it's not nearly that slow you're you're a, you're a little bit faster okay you're a little bit uh, faster but it's still that same well it's a PS1 clunk. game <laughs> I know but so is Crash Bandicoot yeah, no, but it's 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 not precision platforming. It Metal Gear Solid One is gonna be a little bit clunky to go back to. I yeah. I wonder if they're gonna just tinker with it a little bit to make it. So it's funny. Make... It's funny you mentioned that actually because there. I, have you heard about the drama of speaking of tinkering with with old games? Have you heard about the drama with uh, Kultor? No. So, um, A Sphere is that how you say it? A Sphere. I have no idea. So the, the company that, that remasters pretty much all of Star Wars mm. back catalog, all the Luke, Lucasfilm's catalog for the Switch, for GOG, for other things, um, they're in a lot of hot water now at the moment because when they released Kultor 2 for the Switch, they said um, the restored content mod, mod will be DLC, right? So for anyone who doesn't know, when Kultor 2 came out, the game was unfinished. An unfinished yeah. mess. Like Literally, they, they cut half the game out Right, Jeez. it's a whole big thing, and it's infamous. And the stored content mod has been there for years, and it's a great game. Blah 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 blah. Right, the only way you could play it for years was on the PC, um, and then you could also uh, do it on Android now. So it's a very easy way to to put the restored content mod on when you buy it officially on the Android store. Right. However, the Switch it was supposed to come out, on the and it did. Uh, the Knights of the Republic one and two did come out on the Switch uh, last year. However, they straight out said look when you buy the second one buy it because for the first time ever you're going to be able to essentially legally play the restored content and it yeah. was a massive selling point I mean that's why I bought Kultor 2 for the Switch yeah that that's the reason and I know anyone else who I talk to 
um, Macy did the same thing because I already have Kultor eight times. I bought it eight times, at least eight times, right? At I, least I, I don't know. I, at I, least I can't. Times. I can't say I can't give you any go for how many copies of Resident Evil Four I own. But this is what I'm saying to you. Like I, yeah. you know, and there was no reason for me to buy it on the Switch other than I wanted a handy way to play it. Now, ironically, yeah. on the Android with with, with the the Odin. I have a perfect way to play it with the restored content <laughs> mod. It's actually better than it would be on the Switch, right? But, yeah. But that still doesn't excuse what happened here. So they said, look, we're, we're not doing that. Uh, we're actually, you know, lol, not really. And the internet exploded, right? So now so if, you bu- so if you bought the Switch game uh, of Night of the Republic 2, and, you know, you need to have your receipt and all that kind of stuff, and, you know... Basically, you submit a support ticket and they give you your choice of Star Wars game. So, like, I went with the Force Unleashed because I don't have that for the Switch. I have all the rest of them. But I think it's like Knights of the Republic 1 for Steam, uh, Republic Commando, Jedi Knight, Jedi Knight 2. You know, I, I'm not sure exactly what the list is to hand. I don't have to hand, but it is there. And it's just like, wow. So How did wait. you think this was gonna go? You know. So wait, okay. So this, so this, this mod, this that restored the old content. So they were selling sure. that off as priced out otherwise DLC. No, they, they, no, no. It's worse than that. They released the game yeah. with the promise that the restored content mod would be the DLC. So it wasn't like this was tacked on. This was the selling point of the game. Jeez. So it hasn't even actually released yet. The game has, but the uh, no, it released a year ago. But the DLC they cancelled during the week. They said, yeah, we're oh not my. Doing god yeah. okay so they oh they can the dlc yeah oh, so yeah that, yeah they said so we're just not doing why, it so yeah that's why the support ticket is now correct a star wars game oh correct my god yeah yeah, yeah. that so, is such oh that's it's awesome. wild isn't it it's that's crazy so it's like, bad yeah it's how, so bad. you know how do you make a decision that bad well i mean look it wouldn't be look the reality is and actually there are some good memes there's the the iron man meme where it's like modders made this with a bunch of scraps you know <laughs> and it's like it's true like the restored content mod is phenomenal and look if you haven't played cold r2 which you should um as i said at the comic con to, to those poor people who i uh <laughs> yelled at <laughs> and i yelled at <laughs> i didn't want, i wanted a better word uh no but... no let's let's speak your truth Dara. you yelled at a bunch of strangers <laughs> They, they it's, not, it's, not, it's nothing new <laughs> they deserve to be it's only that. natural <laughs> but anyway if you haven't played cult or two uh you know buy it legally obviously gog or steam doesn't matter um gog is probably better because it's easier to, to mod um and then you just download it you download the mod and boom away you go or you can play it on the android and just load it in and away you go but i mean because the, the, the game is a completely different game it's a completely different experience you know when you're playing the original cult or two it's it's great. I love it. It's actually my favorite game to go back to, but it's missing half of a game. It's half an experience, you know. Um, so when you go back and play it, like the story makes more sense. There's more worlds. It's it, it's much thicker. It's 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 really good. So I get why people are upset, and I'm like on one hand, I'm also like, oh well, you know, the Switch isn't really my main anyway. So I put in my support ticket, and I was happy enough, you know, if they if they get back to me, but. I can only imagine some people who the Switch is their main and they bought that specifically for the DLC. They have every right to be upset. Yeah, no, like that. it's truly in its purest sense promised a bill of false goods. <laughs> yeah, I mean, legitimately, it, it's worse than the, the Fallout thing. It's worse than... If, like, there's, there's, there's quite a history of this, of this kind of thing, but it's mad that it happens in 2023. You know, like, Cyberpunk... I wouldn't put in there, even though Cyberpunk was just devastating. Um, it's like well, the, the people bullied you until you released it. I mean, we deserve that. <laughs> you know, we just couldn't wait. If we had waited a couple of months, it probably would have been fine. Um, but yeah, look, video game stuff is hard. But in this case, I'll be honest with you, it's a 25, 20 year old game. Yeah, it's almost a twenty year old game. Um, the fans probably would have built it for you. Uh, there's, there's really no excuse for it. There really isn't. There really isn't. I'm sorry. You know, um, but there you go. That that's 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 a big news. So again, kids, moral of the story here is buy an Odin, <laughs> run Android, and uh, then you can play Night of the Republic right and, now. And, and remember to Republic. Chris and remember to kiss your Dreamcast good night when you go to bed. <laughs> well, here's the thing: even a Dreamcast emulator, because if you want to play Resident Evil Three, sir, <laughs> the only way you're going to be able to do it. 
So yes, do kiss your dream cast goodnight. And this is why retro gaming, real like pro- this era is like god tier. Like the original Xbox, the architecture of that machine is actually unbelievable. It's one of the best computers ever made. Sorry, this is just a rant. What else do we have? <laughs> what else do we have to talk about? Is that me just ranting about? Ah, uh, let's. Well, nonsense. I mean, uh, well, I mean, like you bring up ranting. The other big news in the week is Spider Man. Oh which my I god, know is just going to end oh up with god. you ranting. How much time do we have? Uh, twenty minutes. <laughs> oh, okay, good. All right. So listen, right? We both, we both saw. Okay, folks. Um, if you have not seen Spider Man across the Spider Verse, um, go see it and then come back. Um, oh wait, sorry. Before we do it, GameStop. GameStop is is pretty much gone. Yeah, <laughs> in, in like the yeah. Next, let's next let's month. cut. Hold up, hold that thought. Hold that Listen thought. to us talk about GameStop and then stop. <laughs> yeah. So GameStop is pretty much done this month. Like I was walking around different stores and they're closing as you're leaving them. It's like that bit from you know from The Simpsons where it's like, hurry up, kid. It's gonna be a Starbucks. But instead of it being yeah. a Starbucks, it's just nothing. Um, but there are some good deals to be had now. Actually, if you go online, like I I got like a rake of games for like fifty bucks. So I mean. Oh, I oh, oh I, I like I I'm I'm remembering the the fire sales. Uh, yeah, like th- this field, you know, we haven't had an old school fire sale in a long time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like my, my, I remember when Extra Vision closed remember, down and left oh, the country. Remember, That's Borders big. was even better. Uh, borders, Buying I think I missed shelves. Borders. I no, but you know what? Shelves. Extra Vision was the same. I I walked into an Extra Vision that was selling its shelves. <laughs> No, but that's what GameStop are doing too. <laughs> They're selling their shelves. So, uh, like, uh, I don't know. It, it, you know what? You've l- unlocked the core memory, a recession memory. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had a fire sale in years. It's been about I think, 10 years. Yeah, I have a Blu ray Back to the Future trilogy that I got for five quid. Oh, <laughs> man. No. Just because I, I was walking past an extra vision the weekend they were closing. Literally, I went in and I got like uh, the new Sonic game, new. Uh, and a few other games for like what, 30 quid and then I went online and I got Guardians of the Galaxy, the brand new King of Fighters and a few others for like 30 euro I'm like this is my, I'd be a fool not to buy this you know yeah. that, uh, is, that is somebody in a, in a warehouse out near swords just shoveling <laughs> games into the back of a net into the back of a UPS truck <laughs> Literally, and the UPS guy arrived today, so thank you, Mr. UPS man. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, sorry, we had to talk about that, because it's like, it is crazy how fast that's happening, so I don't know. Like, it truly, like, because what, we're recording on a Wednesday now? Yeah, I mean, by most... Saturday, we would we would say, get out ahead of it. They might be gone by the they time might be gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm just walking past them, and they're closing as you're leaving. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know if the one in Blanche is still open. I haven't been there. There's like two left in town. The major one is closed down. It's wild. It's crazy. So, I mean, online, yeah, like, it's probably your best bet for the time being. But my advice would be, with you know, as somebody who's been through fire sales, that like, like Kev and myself have, because we're, we're old. Um, oh, ra- rats for the picking is what exactly. we are. <laughs> you, you just have to keep going and eventually, I think it's the 11th. So, yeah, dude, <laughs> that's, what time's the 11th? Oh, well. Is that, that, so, that, that, is that Saturday? Is that, that Sunday? Saturday? That's <laughs> Sunday. So, so when this okay, goes, so, so if when you're this... listening to this, Go right to a GameStop. Yeah, it, run. you are on your you you run. are in your car on the way home from work. Get to a GameStop now. Run to GameStop or run to a computer and start buying because it's probably ninety percent off at this point. Um, buy gold. Buy gold now. <laughs> again, we're not giving financial advice, but you know, invest in gold. <laughs> I mean, you should invest in gold anyway. I mean, gold always holds its value. But anyway, we're not giving financial advice. <laughs> we're not giving financial advice, but. When it comes to GameStop, yes, run, don't walk, run to a GameStop. <laughs> remember, and take... I remember, kids, knees and elbows, knees and elbows. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So yeah, I I think Sunday is is the final countdown. So that's wild. So anyway, back to Spider Man. So after you've run to GameStop, you can go to the cinema, right, and then come back to us over on AirToNoMedia.com because that's where the show is going to be. Yeah, listen, I mean, like, what? listen, we're we're setting you up for a great weekend. Really. You're going to have I the best weekend. You really will. You're, you're going to buy a PS2 emulator. You're going to buy a bunch of games in GameStop for nothing. And then you're going to go see a movie. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it, there's all wins here. This is just, a, 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 you know, constant win. But right, so I went to go see Spider-Man into Spider-Verse. I don't remember when. I don't. I think I saw it in a movie. Oh, I saw the Boogeyman. So quick, the Boogeyman is very good until you realize it's a thing that bleeds, and it's not scary anymore. So, <laughs> boo warns, boo warns. That's that is the most concise horror review I've ever heard. 
No, it is. Like, it's not scary. <laughs> I mean, immediately, as soon as you're like, oh, that's just a thing that is real. Okay, it, 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 I'm not scared of it. <laughs> um, so, you know, try again, Stephen King. Um, okay. So I don't Curse know when... you, Stephen King. <laughs> so, I don't uh... know when I... so I don't know when I went to go see Spider-Man. I saw it at some point. It was Friday. Could have been Friday. Yeah, it was Friday. Okay. Yeah. And I was texting you guys during it because I'm... I sit at the back where people can't see me and I text people. I'm I'm not a monster. I, I, I think at the back. you know, I think we might have seen it at the exact same time because I came out of my screening with a rake of text from you. No, yeah, because I was texting you during I was giving you a lot of commentary. In, indifferent now. I know it did, were you in Blanche or were you No, in I was in City World. You were at Cine World. I was in Liffey Valley. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah, no, no. Because I mean, like, if I go see a random movie, it's in it's in Cine World. Because yeah, you know, why not? But yeah, so I went to go see that. And um, okay, look, I, I want to. I, I I do want to be clear. It was very good. It's actually probably one of the best Spider-Man movies ever. Right? They had a lot of things that I really liked. Like I, I liked most of it. To be fair, I still don't like Miles Morales um, as a character. Um, because I it's weird, and I thought it was the only one. And then it's like, apparently, anyone who loves the comics hates Miles Morales. And I'm like, yes, there you go. But he was good in this. Um, I really like the end of it. So spoilers, we are going to talk about spoilers. The end of it. So, okay, I didn't know this was a three-parter. Hold on. Did you know this was a three-parter? I knew it was a two-parter. Uh, I didn't they, know it. They, didn't they, when they announced the sequel, it was very shortly into production. They did kind of make a stealth answer to say, yeah, the movie we want to make is too big. We're splitting it into two. Which I... If you remind me, but if we have time, I do actually want to talk a little bit about that because there's. Did, did your whole div- screen go? Oh, what? A little bit. Mine did. My whole screen got so <laughs> angry. They got so annoyed. And I, oh, like, I, I went with my fiance, and she was like, "Kevin, Kevin, did you know this was what?" what Kevin, yeah, nobody knew. Continued? No, I was because I was, like, I was, yeah, I was I, obviously as I was texting you, I was looking at the time. I'm like, "Geez, you better wrap this up." Like and that's the other, and that's you know. Just kind of speaking broadly before we kind of get into specifics, this is a long movie. Very like, long. And it's like an long. animated yeah. movie of this caliber. Like, I think Into the Spider-Verse was maybe like a pretty svelte 190 minutes. Yeah, it was zippy, yeah. Um, this is a two-hour movie. Which... You know, and look, I'll be honest with you. In some ways, again, the Miles thing drug a little bit. I'm glad to give Gwen enough time because Gwen's an actual character now, which is lovely. Oh, uh, yeah, like this, this movie, this movie has about three main characters it does it is, yeah it, it is does. it is a like it spider-man puns abound it is a web of a movie like well, you know who suffers most in this um miguel suffers most really he, he doesn't get as much time as he should i think you know and that's kind of not great um the yes. spider-man you know, you know what they did though right they did the tva yeah. thing better than loki <laughs> which is insane um you're like okay but look okay so quickly, how much time do we have? Is it ten minutes, fifteen minutes? Ten minutes, ten minutes. Okay, yeah. so okay, things I liked. Um, really like the story. It did it, it did Miles a lot better in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the ending of it was class. I'm actually looking forward to seeing Evil Miles, which is going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, Gwen was great, uh, and it was it was nice to see everybody back. And also like the, the cameos, the lore, the deep Spider Man cuts are amazing. Seeing the spot as the bad guy is hilarious because it's like that's so weird and people that's, hate. Yeah, it. no he. He seems great. like just a nobody villain. They were like, well, how about we make him the most threatening thing in the universe? Yeah, no, he he. everybody hated him. He's he's, <laughs> he's, he's the worst. Actually, I, I actually bought the first and second appearance of the spot, so I own those now. <laughs> but um, yeah, he uh, he's a joke. Everyone hated him, which is why you could get his first appearance for like 20 bucks. Like it was ridiculous. But anyway, um, yeah, but the things I didn't like, and uh, I'll pass it off to you. There's a lot. It, it was it was too. It was too long. It was too long. I didn't like the fact that it was two-parter and not telling anyone. I thought that was really annoying. The animation for the Miles thing, they did this weird part where it looked incredible. There were some amazing shots during that New York uh, with Miles and, and then with Gwen. But whenever they just had them there talking, they did this thing on the background where it was like a blur. And the only way I can describe it is like watching a 3D movie without 3D glasses yeah, on. Yeah, I like and it, I it, felt it, sick after it. I Literally. get what you're saying. There's a weird field of view. It's it's almost like cuz I don't know if you can do this cuz I was reading online that apparently not everyone can actually do this where you like kind of manually unfocus your own vision. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. Um so like it, it's kind of like that. It's a weird field of view thing that I can understand why, but I don't think they quite got it right because it does look like 
it does feel like you're getting a little bit cross-eyed. Yeah, and that's um, the, and and when I walked out of the movie, my eyes actually hurt for about three hours afterwards. And that's the thing, as like as beautiful as most of the animation in this movie is, it is strobe heavy. Yeah, like but here, not, like, but the, but the strobes weren't the, dude. The strobes aren't even the worst part because they had a no. sign expecting that. It was this specific thing that they did through at least forty five percent of the movie, where I'm like, this is just ugly. Why are you ruining such? And I wouldn't mind. It would be after this spectacular bit of animation, and it is honestly. This movie is one of it, it's a masterwork of animation. It really is. But then completely. But then they cut to this mangy, horrible <laughs> thing that messes up your eyes. And I'm like, I, I, I'm glad you picked up on that too. But sorry, that yeah. that that that's my. So look, I would, I would say it 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 gets about eighty percent only for that fact. It would it would nearly be a perfect movie if it wasn't for that. So sorry, go on. No, you're you're right. It. It is distracting, but I I could I could look past it considering everything. I literally couldn't. My because... eyes hurt. <laughs> literally, my eyes hurt. Uh, but yeah, no. To like echo, like what they did adding to Gwen's like to Spider Gwen's story in this is astounding. Like oh, yeah. there is like the, her through line through the movie is just some is is some of the greatest character work for any Spider Man kind of trope yeah i've seen yeah uh, which like to get into kind of like spoilers her talk with her dad at the end yeah beautiful amazing, amazing. um other highlights i have to give it up for spider punk hobie hobie is my boy he rules <laughs> very small part but i had a blast with him um hobie who's and hobie, hobie spider punk oh god no oh god i hate him so much I love him. he he took he took over, he took over from Miles Morales as who I hate most in the Spider Man world. Oh, Dara. That's, yeah. Oh, Dara. <laughs> just, um, but... just, oh my God. Jeez, such a flute. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, mean, I might have to cut Dude. that out, but oh God, he just he wrecked my head so much. Oh, Sorry, no, I, 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 I'm all about his shtick. <laughs> His stick is the thing that got me. I was like, oh, your character's cool and whatever. But, oh, no, the stick just the real kind of like London thing. It's like, oh, stop. Um, stop. I get that's the character, but also like. But yeah, no, you as you said as well, like the, the Spider-Man, like when you get into like Spider HQ, as oh, it were. Very, yeah, it's very good. Like nonstop, wall to wall. The Spider Cowboy. No, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Why is the horse wearing a mask? To conceal his identity. Yeah, it was. It's great. The, um, I didn't realize there were that many spider incarnations. I like. I don't Genuinely. know. Like, you might have more expertise on the kind of the comics of it. I yeah. want. Like, I'd say a lot of them are just writer, like the writers' room of this movie spitballing. No, no, uh, no, dude. A lot of them are actually like. Oh, pretty no, much everything is in the comics. Yeah. Everything That's is in the, from the comics. Everything. That's so crazy. Um, no, like everything. I mean, like that's what's in. Yeah, Spider Punk is actually not annoying in the comics. He's just incredibly annoying in this movie. That's why I was just like, oh my god. Oh well, I, I mean, like Spider Punk is absolutely like one of the prominent ones. But I'm talking about like the background characters. Yeah, but that is the what I'm dudes that are one frame. <laughs> yeah, but like there's so obviously like you have your you have the famous ones, which is Spider Man 1960, and you know even the one from the PS4 game and all kind of stuff. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, like. There's been, there's even deep cuts to the animated series, which is amazing. Yeah. The animated series had a, had the first Spider Verse. <laughs> that Jesus, that uh, that 1970s one frame joke killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love the Lego one. The Lego one is actually the Lego one was great. Well, I mean, it it makes sense. I mean, I don't. I it, the Lego movie. The Lego movie was a yeah, Lord it was made Miller by the same movie. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it? I think it might have been Sony as well. I can't remember if it's the, if it's the same animation. I think um, it was Sony. Yeah, but I mean, I wasn't expecting it, and I was just like, I didn't realize I needed a Lego <laughs> Spider Man movie until I was like, this is wonderful. I need this. This is now my favorite incarnation of Spider Man. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, but what I actually just well well just kind of circle back. I wanted to talk about the sequel. Okay. Because. Just there, there's a developing story right now because the original, the the initial plan was, you know, they realized this movie's too big. We want to make, we have to make two movies to make to tell the story we're telling. Fair. Um, so this movie ends with the to be continued beyond the spiders. The initial plan was to release this one this summer, beyond the spider verse next summer. However, outside of the spider verse. 
there has been some uh, turmoil in the entertainment world. Me and Kean have touched, I have done a whole, like most of an episode about the, uh, the Writers Guild of America strikes. So a lot of the scripts for Spider-Man seem to have been penned previously. So that it's not as affected by the writers strikes as a lot of other projects, but that's an impact. The big development recently is the voice acting is the voice actors. Uh, SAG-AFTRA, which is the Screen Actors Guild in America, have not voted to strike, but voted to authorize a strike should talks break down by the end of the month. And you'll notice, people have been noticing that Beyond the Spider-Verse has seemingly kind of taken a lot of its release date info, kind of, it's pulled it back uh, to say, you know, may- Anything that had said summer 2024 has kind of been wiped off for the moment. Pending any sort of union action. So, I mean, obviously, hopefully, the unions get their due. Actors and writers and everybody involved get a fair paycheck. Don't anticipate the Spider-Man movie as soon as we think. Expect a delay is what I'm saying. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um, But it's good. It's good. And you know what? We have a pretty busy week, actually, or a bu- busy month, really, because uh, mm. not this not this week, the week after, we have the release of another multiversal movie, uh, The Flash, <laughs> which I, I'm actually so excited for. It's, I, it is, um, you will be my point of contact. I'm not watching that movie in a cinema. <laughs> listen, I would, I would not see it for Ezra Miller, but it has Michael Keaton's Batman in it. I have to see it. I, I have to. I have it, to see it. It I is so. To. It is so funny watching like the marketing team of this movie scramble so hard. It's to, Michael Keaton. That's the sell, only as to Batman. sell everything else. I think there was like I think there's been McDonald's toys released or something, and they'll show the lineup, and it's about twelve Batman's and one Flash. And yeah. like, my <laughs> guy, <laughs> you, you don't like it is. It is you forget. You, like you almost forget whose movie it actually is. It's a Batman movie. That's it's what it is. Movie. That's what it is. That's all it is. It's nobody else. Um, um, yeah, no, you're like, I probably will watch it long after it's out. Yeah, I need. I I will have you explain this movie to me. That's how okay. I'm going to experience. It. That's fair. And look, I respect yeah. that. I mean, here's the thing: if if it wasn't, look, I get free movies, so I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch any movies yeah. anyway. You know, you know this. I go. I I I well, I go up to random anime that i know nothing about and sit down and watch it that's where we are right and you're and uh, god bless you for it it's been a joy <laughs> that's where we are um, um so yeah like but i mean yeah that's coming out soon and i think there's another big release at the end of the summer as well so look, no my oh no my my tentpole release i don't think i'm going to be in a cinema until the biggest movie of the year comes in right. and by that i mean two and that's boppenheimer <laughs> Oh yeah, no. I mean, I'm I'm not excited for that, but I am. If that makes sense. Oh, uh, I'm like that's that's a double feature. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my head blown off by a nuclear explosion, and then get it put back together with pink pastels. I cannot. Wait. <laughs> I think that's what people are doing. I think that's oh, the, it's it's they're at the I same day. The it's, yeah, that's so funny. I don't know if you've heard. Like we, we're we're gonna wrap up now in a sec, but um. Because obviously it's a crit like Oppenheimer's Christopher Nolan movie. So yes. it is just monopolizing the IMAX screens yes. all throughout yes. the world. Yes. I think at the same weekend, the new Mission Impossible is supposed to come out. Oh, I'm so Tom, looking forward to that. And Tom Cruise is furious that he can't get a, his movie shown in an IMAX. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to that movie though as well. I love, <laughs> absolutely love those uh, in an Impossible movies. They're, they're, you know, they're them and the Fast and Furious are ones I keep meaning to like sit down and actually watch all of because I do love a good action movie. Like, I look, I'll be honest with you, like Tom Cruise movies, they're all kind of the same, but they're great. <laughs> I mean, they, they, yeah, they've been selling that much for that long. Listen, the the, the extent of my Mission Impossible knowledge is Metallica's I Disappear mm. and that one clip of Henry Cavill cocking his arms like a shotgun. So That's... here's what you, so here's what you do: watch from three and you have a good time. Hell yeah. <laughs> Genuinely. Like the first two, they're okay. They're not great. From the third one, they just become phenomenal <laughs> movies. They just become these incredible films. And I don't know what it is. So um well, that brings us to our time. Um Dara, yes, was, is there anything you would like to plug? I think I, I, I plugged the 
the Odin a lot. You plug the Odin pretty well, yeah. Um, and again, look, we're not sponsored. I just genuinely like sharing good products that we have, you know. So, but no, in all, in all journeys, if you want to give me money, you can. <laughs> uh, horrenda, my band Horrenda are doing a show in the Grand Social on the 18th, which is a Sunday. Um, we'd very much appreciate people showing up and buying tickets and buying merch so we can do more shows and so we don't have to keep our singer in a little box. <laughs> so, but maybe if you he want... likes it in a little box. <laughs> He does, but you have to take him out sometimes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you guys want to do that, you can you know just type in Horrenda Grand Social and it will take you directly to the link where you can buy a ticket or you can show up at the door and uh, yeah, spend money, please. Wonderful. That That is one of the ways you could send our money. If you would also like to send our money a different way, you can go on to Nerds No Media and find <laughs> us on Patreon. Yes, uh, yes, you can also give us have. money directly. Give us money directly. And from there, you have our link tree. We can get uh, to all of our sites through that as well. Through our Twitter, our, our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the whole lot's on there. You can find us all, nerdsnowmedia.com. Yes. Uh, that has been us. And uh, don't and always remember, get to a GameStop right now. And <laughs> run, remember, run, don't walk, run. Run, run, don't walk. And uh, always remember that pride is a protest, first and foremost. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Goodbye, everybody. Alright, so you're listening to the podcast, you're like, hey, I'm not in Ireland, how do I get in touch? Well, TuneIn has you covered. That's how you can check us out live when we're on the radio. Um, you go to TuneIn and download the app, or you can check out the live streams on nerdthnomedia.com or phoenix92.5 FM. If you want to get in contact with us, it's very easy. Nerd to know Media everywhere. Nerd to know Media on Twitter. Nerd to know Media Instagram. Nerd to know Media on Twitch. Nerd to know Media at gmail.com if you want to reach out via email. Hope to hear from you soon. Check out the rest of Rewind here on Phoenix 92.5 FM every Tuesday at 8pm to 9pm. And of course, over on NerdToKnowMedia.com, the only wrestling podcast by wrestling fans who don't hate wrestling. We'll see you then. Hey, Dara, what are you doing over there in Ireland? Like with the freaking leprechauns and everything. That's not cool. You should be over there with the God players. At least then you could, like, I don't know, pretend like you got, I don't know, some kind of thing going on. Yeah, with that. Uh, you give me a Brooklyn way. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production. 